Hey everyone, welcome to the Cast and Spirit Podcast. My name is John, and today we have somebody super special. His name is Matt Hong. He is one of the guys who got me into spear fishing. We met at a Fathomir's auction. I didn't know many people, and he sat down and was just like, oh, next thing you know, we're going to Baja shooting cool fish. And uh, my love for spear fishing just grew. So welcome to the show, Matt. What's up, man? Finally, about time. <laughs> I know, I know. I've been trying to get you on for forever. I twisted his arm, everybody, and now he's here. Uh, so the thing that I really want to talk about today is why are inverted rollers such a thing? Cool, man. Like, yeah, I just, uh, I love rocking r- inverted rollers just because I get a lot of power and a small form, form factor, man. And that's just the main thing I like about inverted rollers. Um, you know, you can use a longer gun. I'm a smaller guy too. So I forgot to mention I'm a smaller guy and I tend to dive in waters that aren't so clear. But you know, you can uh, using a longer gun for me is just uh, a little bit something that I prefer not to. I like to dive deep, and I like to dive in dirty waters, and I like to shoot big fish. So having a smaller gun really works out for me. Some people would say, looking at you know between a regular roller, which is just you know either the water bearings or ceramic bearings, sometimes stainless steel bearings, and it's a pretty simple setup, right? You're just bending that um, that band around the the roller. But then you have this inverter roller, which has pulleys, it has extra stuff, it looks complicated. Why is it not like too much stuff going on? Does it really give you that much benefit for all that complexity? Right on. All right. So just to kind of break it down, um, I like re- inverter rollers for pretty much like three main reasons. Number one, I'm getting so much power for the length of the gun. So compared to a traditional gun, compared to a traditional roller, an inverter roller, it's going to get you a lot more power for a smaller package in comparison. Um, so what I'm rocking right now is my like all round gun is a hundred centimeter inverted roller. And that system can sling like an eight mil shaft, which is way thicker than your traditional shaft um, at the same speeds with even less recoil than a traditional roller. Uh, so you put all those things together and I really like it. And you get some bonus features that, uh, I like a lot over regular rollers because I've used to rock rollers, uh, traditional rollers. And um, basically, the things I like about the inverted roller or what an inverted roller does is what a ro- traditional roller does, but better. So let me go through that. Uh, first thing is when you're ro- loading, reloading a uh, traditional roller, you have this small little gap in the muzzle that you're trying to feed the shafts through. And... That gets so annoying under the water. So with the inverted roller, you have this big wishbone about, I don't know, a two-inch diameter hole that you can shove your shaft through as you're reloading that doesn't get hung up on everything. So I could reload like the primary stage a lot faster. Uh, And then a second advantage that I really like too is that they track a lot better than regular roller guns. So on a roller gun, a traditional roller, you have a band sitting on bottom and then it rolls over to the top. So basically you have, you know, a set of bands on the bottom side of the gun and then on the top side of the gun. And as you're, you know, swinging the gun around, I'm sure everyone who uses a roller knows the bands just rattle like crazy and they just cause all this drag in the water, just, you know, and, and that drives me nuts. So a nice thing with the inverted roller is since you have that pulley system, uh, once you load the gun, all the rubber is going to be on one side of the gun. So it tracks just like a traditional gun, except you have the functionality of a roller gun so uh that's the kind of the second thing and then the last thing is you know this is kind of a really neat added benefit you know i'm a big shooter like i shoot guns uh in real life or not in real life (laughs) i shoot guns uh like real firearms and one of the things that is important um is your sight picture sight alignment and with a traditional gun or with a regular roller gun you have the rubber that sits on top of the gun and on top of the shaft um, so when you line up to present on a target, like a fish or whatever, you know, the bands actually obstruct your field of view or your sight picture when you're lining up and taking aim at that fish. Um, so with an inverted roller, uh, instead of having the rubber on top of the gun, you actually have, I guess, just like Dyneema line on top. So you just get this really clean, really crisp sight picture. It's basically just the gun, the shaft, and a tiny little line that you all line up and take your shot on a fish. So those are the three main reasons I like uh, I like inverted rollers. So how is the uh, recoil on it? Is it noticeably different than a regular roller? Oh, absolutely. I, that's one thing I forgot to mention too. It's like 
Yeah, just this last pat, this last trip down in Baja, I took some kind of stupid shots with my inverted roller, just because of the fact that there's zero recoil. You know, everybody like complains and was like, "Dude, why don't you just man up, you know, and use a traditional, uh, traditional gun, like whatever the recoil, just suck it up." And you're gonna realize that, sure, I mean, I could shoot a traditional gun all day. You know, the recoil doesn't really bother me all that much, but it's so beneficial to be able to shoot a gun like upside down, which I did this last Baja trip. I went upside down and even level out. I saw a fish pull the sugar tr- upside down and then had like a yellow tail that kind of came at me at a weird angle instead of like, you know, swinging the gun and getting my form proper. I just kind of flicked my wrist 90 degrees and shot the shot the gun like 90 degrees to my right. And there's like no recoil. So compared to a traditional roller, you know, you still get a little bit of a kick um, just because of the way the mass is distributed. You know, you're sending you're still sending rubber forwards um, as well as a shaft forwards. And you get a little bit of cancellation with the traditional roller, but with the inverted roller and the pulley system, when the shaft flies forward, all the rubber is coming backwards at you. So those two forces really cancel each other out. Um, and you'll notice it. You can shoot, like like I said, you know, with your wrist completely bent 90 degrees or upside down. Um, it's a real nice advantage of having you know, no recoil. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, too, is um, you can learn your gun better when there's less recoil. Uh, so... For example, when I'm taking a shot and my shaft is bent without me knowing it, or if I'm, I just changed a set of bands or just tinkered with the gun, whatever, um, when there's less recoil, you can follow how the shaft is flying. As soon as you pull the trigger, you know you don't have the gun jumping in your face and this huge, uh, what's, what's it called? The cavitation bubble going off with a traditional gun, obstructing your vision. You don't know what's going on. Your hand is flying all, all the switch way. Um, when there's less recoil, I pull the trigger and I can just watch the shaft fly. It's kind of trippy how little recoil is. Literally, you pull the trigger and you just see the shaft fly away and the gun doesn't even kick. It's, it's nuts. Okay, now you probably have a bunch of guys saying like, how do I get my hands on one? So what mm-hmm. brands do you recommend? Or I think you make your own always, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so you can either make your own, man, or I recommend um, getting in touch. Mr. Joints. Uh, has been the guy who took care of me from A to Z. Uh, uh, he makes some awesome guns out of Tahiti, custom made, you know, Burmese, Teak, uh, Badass, Ermies, uh, the Ermies Trigger Max. So if you want to get like a custom gun, even though, you know, his pricing is a little bit up there, but what you're paying for really is to get the gun dialed in. Um, and if you want a, like a really good first inverted roller experience, definitely reach out to him. Uh, he has a 100 centimeter gun and then like a 130. So those are like the two inverted options. He might have more, so get in touch with him. Uh, for me though, I also use guns that I put together myself. Uh, that's another thing that I would advise is, you know, if you're gonna get into this, learning how they work from the ground up and putting the gun together yourself is definitely a beneficial um, aspect of it. But like I said, if you're looking to just uh, get something out of the box and have a you know, great experience out of the box, uh, reach out to Mr. Joints. So tell me, if I wanted to build my own, which I kind of do. You know, I've, I've put one mm-hmm. together with you a while back, but you know, I, that gun didn't come home with me, so I feel sad. And I need to, <laughs> oh, I need to probably make my own just to say I did it. What am I, what am I doing from uh, the handle all the way to the shaft? What, what am I picking for the best components? All right. So we'll go tip to butt and... Uh, Starting with the front, you definitely want to get an inverted roller muzzle. A few companies make it. You got the MVD G3, uh, but my favorite that I've been rocking right now, and you can get this uh, through Spear America. Just talk to Petros. He can hook you up with the components that you'll need, uh, is the Siegel Sub inverted roller. So Siegel, I think, is out of uh, Italy. And I like it because it's got these two large roller heads. And uh, routing the line through the muzzle is super easy with how he has it set it up. So you got a Siegel Sub roller muzzle. Uh, moving on to the back or to the middle of the gun, you have the pulley system. And in terms of pulleys, there's a lot of companies that are doing it right now. Like I'm actually experimenting with using a bunch. They're not too important. You just need it, honestly, a set of small pulleys. I'm using some sailing ones from Ronston. It's like the r- smallest size uh, pulleys that you can get for sailing at West Marine. Uh, or you can also look at Ermes. Uh, Ermes is selling a bunch of hardware in terms of inverted roller pulleys. And then moving to the back of the gun, you just want to make sure that you have a trigger mech that can handle a hot load because you are going to put some serious stress on this trigger mech. Uh, Just to kind of like put that in reference, 
uh, the last gun build that I did, I loaded it super hot with like four extra kicker bands and like a primary stage band, not four, three kicker bands and a primary stage. Um, and it actually seized up the trigger mech because I was using this this cheaper one. I'm not going to say who, but I went to pull the trigger and the gun would not fire. So just because it was loaded so hot in the trigger mech. So definitely recommend uh, either Meandros uh, has some really, really rock solid uh, trigger mechs. Uh, I would think they're the Meandros. Uh, I can't remember the name. Uh, but they have a roller mech, and then the Army's double roller mech um, can definitely handle those loads. So yeah, the main three things: muzzle, uh, a, tri a, a trigger mech, and some pulleys. And then for handles, do you like the Meandros one still, or do you have a new preference? Oh yeah. So for me, handles, I am partial to kind of two handles. I, I like the Meandros handles a lot, um, as well as the Pathos D'Angelo twos. Um, just because of the grip angle, like I said, I shoot firearms. So with that, with those grip angles, I'm just, it's just something that I'm very comfortable with, very, very used to. Uh, you also get a couple nice bonus points cause it's a reverse trigger mech. So the shaft is going to come all the way back as far as you can just to get that little extra, you know, band stretch. Um, and then on top of that, the, the trigger mechs are, are pretty bomb proof. So yeah, the D'Angelo twos or the Meandros is. So what's the last thing you want people to just know about inverted rollers is there like one key takeaway yeah uh so i mean they all have their own place you know so i even though i use inverted rollers a lot there's still a place for traditional guns and there's still a place for regular roller guns um and so i just want people to know it's like figure out what you're trying to do and then kind of build your loadout based off of what you're trying to do and the main reason i use inverted rollers is because like i like practicing for it because for me you know the biggest trips of the year are going down to baja uh and down there you know we got some pretty bad viz not bad but not great viz so i want a shorter gun but then there's big fish you know there's groupers that are up to 100 you know 80 to 100 pounds or yellowtail that are like 40 pounds so i want to be able to sling that steel you know a thick steel with enough power to, to penetrate those fish. Um, one thing to note too is like, speaking of, you know, the place for inverted rollers, uh, traditional guns definitely have their place too. So for example, like in terms of tuna, uh, I definitely go the route of a traditional gun just because you already have that long band stretch uh, because they're usually, you know, 130 centimeters plus. So there's really no added benefit to running a, an inverted roller system on a long gun like that um, because all the benefits you get are going to be kind of, nullified once you get you know a gun that's longer than a certain length just one more thing before we go do you like rocking it with some a certain type of shaft do you go with the slip tip always or do you have like a double flop or single flop or hardened steel shaft the eight mil what mm -hmm. do you like to use yeah uh so far pretty much i i've been using two main types of shaft i got the pathos uh eight millimeter sandvik steel so those are just really common to get a hold of so I, I go to Petros for those. Uh, flopper shaft, just because generally speaking in Baja, it's pretty rocky and I'm not baller enough to just send a shaft full on into the rocks with a slip tip and call it good or just be like, hey, sorry, I'll just switch out to another slip, uh, slip tip. So yeah, I'm rocking a flopper, uh, either the Pathos Sandvix, which I noticed are um, a little springier. So they have some give to it, uh, which can work in your favor in terms of you know not having the shaft bend or... Secondarily, Mori shafts. Got to give a huge shout out to Mori, uh, Mori fish. Uh, Mori shafts are custom made, beautifully, you know, uh, welded. Everything's polished and smooth, and and they actually have a little bit more heft to them too, which lends itself to uh, the inverted game. Perfect. Well, we'll stop there. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Make sure you check out Matt's Instagram, Mister dot california with a one his new youtube channel which is going to be dope all catch and cook and a whole bunch of other goodies it's going to be called adventure eats and then shout out to mr joints and spear america thanks for coming on the show man thank you man thanks for having me bro absolutely tomorrow we're going to be talking about the fisheries down in baja so make sure you tune in tomorrow see you guys hey just one more thing before you go would you find it helpful to get a few fishing tips and tricks sent straight to your inbox well, if so, head over to castandspear.com forward slash join and sign up for our weekly newsletter. Tight lines.